All right, we're going to start looking at our trigonometric functions. In this case, specifically cos x. Because what we are given is that cos x equals 1. As always, we want to figure out what value of x makes this true. And by the way, you often will see people put brackets in cos of x. You, in this case, this was just x. Some people will leave the brackets out. But often the brackets help make it clear that you're taking cos of what's in the brackets. But we have to solve this. Sum of solve for x. As always, we want x on its own, that means. Well, that means I've got to do the opposite of what's being done to it right now. We're taking the cos of x, so the opposite of cos is actually cos to the minus 1. So cos to the minus 1 of cos of x. And we're, as always, we have to do this to both sides, cos to the minus 1 of 1. Well, these two will cancel. And all we're going to be left with on the left-hand side is x. x equals cos to the minus 1 of 1. Well, we're basically done. Well, at least kind of, sort of done in terms of solving a value of x because this is a function we have on our calculator. We can take the cos of something and we can take cos to the minus 1 of something. In fact, they're probably the same button on your calculator. You just have to maybe hit the shift key or something. Take cos to the minus 1 of 1 in your calculator. It evaluates when will cos be equal to 1. What value of x? Well, we'd get 0 actually. Nice, beautiful number, 0. When x is equal to 0, cos will equal 1. In fact, you could plug that back in and check cos of 0 and you'd get 1. And you might be tempted to say we're done. But we wouldn't be in this case. If you think back to the intro video for this module, or if you haven't watched it, maybe go watch it, what do we have is that cos is a periodic function, or it repeats itself. Every set period, every set amount, it will repeat itself. So cos x will be equal to 1 at 0, but also again later on, and then again, and again, and again, and again. Because it keeps on going. Is that sinusoidal repeating function? Well, the normal cosine function, the period, how long between repeats, is 2 pi. 2 pi. So every 2 pi, we're going to repeat itself. So we add 2 pi to whatever the answer is we got. In this case, we got convenient 0, but every 2 pi, it's going to repeat itself. So at 2 pi, it's going to repeat itself. At 4 pi, it's going to repeat itself. At 6, at 8, at 10, at 12, etc. For on, forever. But the thing is, we also have it repeating in the opposite direction. So it's also going to be repeating itself at minus 2 pi, and minus 4 pi, etc., etc. Minus 6, minus 22 pi, minus 2 billion pi. It'll repeat itself. There's basically limitless answers because we can keep going in each direction. So we can think it's every 2 pi, well, some n times 2 pi x will be equal to n times 2 pi, where n is an integer, which is a fancy way of saying a whole number. I'm not saying positive or negative, because it could be both. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to whatever number we want, and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, all the way down. So there is, again, limitless answers, because there's limitless n's we could really consider. It's just, there's many solutions, and that's why you're normally going to see in a question like this that they were actually define a range. Because getting that the answers are limitless is not always the most useful. Usually we're going to be considering between some range, between say 0 and 2 pi, or 0 and 4 pi. Uh, in fact, there's a question in the modules that will get you to do one kind of like this, where it's a defined range and will might limit how many answers you have. So, give it a shot.